So two, uh, two of the main presentations that highlighted Brutinib, one was presented by Jennifer Wyack, and that was the uh, Alliance study. So that looked at, for older patients, uh, untreated older patients with CLL, looking at Abrutinib and Rituximab versus Abrutinib versus Bendamustine and Rituximab. And again, this I think solidifies the use of Abrutinib again in older folks. Um, the PFS or progression-free survival was better in the Abrutinib arms. Um, and so there was no doubt that uh, Abrutinib, the Abrutinib arms were better than Bendamustine Rituximab. It doesn't, I think it does speak to the, um, there was the third cohort of either Abrutinib Rituxib versus Abrutinib. I think the addition of Rituximab did not enhance Abrutinib alone as monotherapy. So when folks ask the question, uh, does a monoclonal antibody need to be combined with Abrutinib? I think we have fair amount of data now that says maybe rituximab or another antibody doesn't add all that much to abrutinib, which may be different with venetoclax per se. Um, but I think this, again, this, this trial sort of highlights that the progression-free survival was better in the abrutinib-containing arms. Uh, the next uh, larger, uh, uh, looking at the untreated but fit population, so this is a, a sort of similar to the Jennifer Wyack study. This was the ECOG study um, that will be actually presented tomorrow. Uh, by Tate Shannonfeld, and this looked at fludarabine, cyclophosphamide, rituximab, or FCR versus abrutinib rituximab. And again, another, uh, for younger fit patients, another example of abrutinib. Finally, that question of is chemoimmunotherapy better or not than abrutinib, and here abrutinib rituximab, again, won out over the FCR arm, including increase in overall survival. So both progression-free survival and overall survival were better with abrutinib than FCR, with that exception of the mutated IGVH folks. So it obviously was better for patients with high-risk features and patients who were unmutated, but the survival was not necessarily better in the patients who are mutated. So that question of can you still use chemoimmunotherapy or FCR in mutated IGVH folks, I think is still reasonable uh, to do so, um, depending upon the patient's preference, but you absolutely can talk about that with your patient. So whether chemoimmunotherapy or a brutinib-containing regimen, I think both are probably acceptable until we have long-term data. Um, and those were the two highlights. Uh, the Illuminate study was also presented at the meeting, uh, and this looked at, it was a, an update of uh, a brutinib and chlorambucil, a uh, brutinib and a chlorambucil, but a brutinib with obinutuzumab and chlorambucil and obinutuzumab. Now, obviously, in the United States, this is uh, chlorambucil isn't used that commonly, um, and so the comparator arm of having uh, chlorambucil and obinutuzumab compared to abrutinib and obinutuzumab may not be something we would normally do. Uh, clearly, the trial favored the abrutinib arm, again, highlighting abrutinib over chlorambucil or you know, chemo, you know, chemo immunotherapy. Um, so th that was also a significant finding, but again, the comparator arm lacks a little bit of an interest for, for some of us. Uh, but certainly, uh, just again, solidifies and highlights that an abrutinib-containing regimen is, is better than a chemoimmunotherapy-containing regimen.